I want to dive into the mystique of Hamspear. What is known as the land of sky blue waters. Like to me, this is very mysterious. So I'm really excited to hear. And then I also want to talk about the paraphernalia that is like related to hams that they've done from mini sewing kits to massive signs, um, always with this like lake scene and the, sometimes the bear. So to help us understand the origins of this passion and almost cult following of hams, um, Peter Hetzel is joining us along with uh, one of the legends of Ham's collecting phenomenon, uh, Stephen Miner, also known as Dr. Ham's. Talk Ham's all night, dear. <laughs> you know, it's, this is just, it's, it's not just a hobby with me. It's, it is a passion. It really is. And, and I, and I enjoy doing this kind of stuff like this. When Peter asked me, I was excited. I That's mean, awesome. You know, I mean, yeah, it's uh, what else do you do in Minnesota on a Saturday night, right? Right. Well, it's <laughs> the weather sucks. And I mean, you know, I mean, it's, yeah, it's. And I really want to thank you. First of all, Crystal, thank you for agreeing to this idea. Putting up with I us. I love it. <laughs> yeah, I'm putting up with us. You know, you're just amazing. And Stephen, thank you for, for saying yeah, any, yes any to time. it. I, it's been a long time. And, and Crystal, uh, Crystal and I have been friends for, a, for 10 years. And uh, I'm kind of a synchronicity guy. And, and you and I were talking also that the, the blue hams can came out this week. Yeah. And you know, it's, it's, it's uh, really kind of a, mon a momentous moment, I think, for it really the yeah, for It really is. It's just so cool. Yeah. yeah. Well, Steve, why don't you why don't you tell us how I, I, I and I'll share my story, but uh, I think one of the things that Crystal was interested in is the origin. You know, where does it begin? Where a passion begins for someone? And uh, I'm sure you've told your story to many people, but I haven't heard it. And I'd like to hear it. Okay. So. Well, I started collecting uh, beer cans like a lot of kids did back in the 70s. Uh, I worked for Chrysler Corporation in the early 70s, and and there was two other guys that I worked with, and we took turns driving. And the deal was, is whoever drove, they bought the beer for the ride home. And uh, so I started collecting the Schmidt cans, the Scenic cans, and uh, realizing that there was all these different ones, 21 actually to be exact. And I got up to a collection of about 4,000 cans roughly. And of course, ran out of room. And so I kept narrowing the collection down. I got rid of the rusty cans and I got rid of the 16 ounce cans. I got rid of the foreign cans. And then I ended up collecting just Minnesota brewed cans. And... Uh, so then I got to the point where I had a pretty good collection and I worked it. Anybody that came into my auto shop, I'd say, hey, you know where any old beer cans are? And, right. and so I found some great finds and I was able to parlay that into, a, you know, some really good collectible cans. What year are we talking here about? Uh, early 70s. Early, 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 early 70s. 70s, okay. Yeah. Early 70s, yeah. I'm an old guy. <laughs> yeah, well, me too. Yeah, I'm an old guy. But, but uh, so, so, so I got to the point where I'd go to these shows and I wasn't able to get anything new because I had everything. And I got a little bored with it, and and my, I'm a huge baseball fan, sports fan, Minnesota sports fan, and I remember those commercials as a kid. And and uh, another thing that kind of got me going was my grandparents lived in St. Paul, and my parents would bring me up there for a couple of weeks in the summertime to get rid of me. And my grandpa was quite a beer drinker. His bar of choice was the Anchor Inn on Snelling Avenue, not too far from the state fairgrounds. And of course, back then, you know, kids could go in a bar, no big deal. And, and my grandma would say, well, go get grandpa. It's time for supper. So I'd walk up to the bar, go in. Of course, the guys got so they knew me and stuff. And, and I'd go in, they'd sit me up on a bar stool and give me a bag of peanuts and an orange pop. And they had a scenorama there though, with the moving water and stuff. And they said, if you watch long enough, a bear sticks his head out of that tent. Well, of course, it never happened. But the, the impression that made on a seven-year-old and of course, you'd look away for a second. Oh, you just missed him. You know? And so I told my wife, I said, I'm going to start collecting ham stuff. And this would have been about 75, roughly. All right. 1975. And uh, so I say I sold my collection, my can collection, to a couple guys in St. Louis, which I really regret that, not looking back. But And I started collecting ham stuff primarily in 1975, roughly right in there. And not realizing how much stuff they actually had. Oh, I mean, well, that's that was one of the questions I was going to ask you, Stephen. Is uh, how many paraphernalia items from, like uh, Crystal mentioned, you know, the, the little sewing kit to you know oh. the massive scene around? How many items? You maybe ten thousand, possibly? Oh, more than that. More, more than that. More than that. Oh gosh, yeah. Oh yeah. If you count 
every coaster, every glass, every, right. every, you know, little item, like you say, they, they were had to be the top. I mean, they would put their okay. name on everything, ashtrays, lighters, yes. uh, barbecue grill scrapers. My God, it's just jackknifes, you name it. I mean, they, they put their name on it. I, you know, so I started collecting, and back when I first did started doing this, it was still largely just cans. Most people just collected cans. There, there was a lady from Mapleton, Minnesota that collected trays, and there was a couple of people that collected glassware, but the signage, or Bruyana as we call it, wasn't really that popular yet. And so I was pretty lucky. I kind of got in on the ground floor. And, right. and of course, good, I mean, the uh, brewery was still open at this point, the Hamlet well, Brewery sure. up in St. Paul. And, and I worked for Goodyear Tire Company at the time. And, and, and Goodyear would give you your birthday as a holiday, an official holiday. So I would save my money all year. And my wife said, what do you want to do for your birthday? And I says, go to the brewery. So we would drive up there and go take the tour. And I, I could do the tour myself. I took, I mean, I mean, I had, right. to memorize. I was answering the questions before they asked them, right? <laughs> Who is this guy? Right. And, right. and so we'd go take the tour. And then they had this elevator that went up to what they call the Raskeller in the sky and go up, have a couple samples. Well, more than a couple, but anyway. <laughs> and, and then I would go down in the gift shop and I'd buy one of everything. One of everything. I, I, and, and they just loved me there, obviously. And I never had That's the right. presence of mind to say, well, you, got, you got anything in the back room that you can't sell or, or the, right. you oh. don't think of that, of course. And no. so I have people now come to see my collection. Where, where'd you get that? And I said, yeah, gift, right, right, right. Gift shop? what gift shop? And I just, <laughs> I'm kind of dating myself, but yeah. So I, that's what really got me started. Right. And when I would find these signs, they were in rough shape. Uh, a lot of times not working. And, and so I've been, a, I've, I've been in the automotive business. I just retired last June, uh, 50 years in the automotive right. business. So I, I fix things. Right. So I thought, well, okay, I can fix that. And so I started doing that on my own and people said, well, where did you get that? I said, well, I made it. Well, can you make yeah. it? And now it's turned into this just unbelievable second business. So to speak. I'm busier right, now than I was doing regular work. So, uh, and just having a blast doing it. I mean, it's just, it's such fun and it's such great people. And, and uh, it, it's just a wonderful hobby. It really is. It just, it's, it's hard to explain how fun it is, but. You know, well, you're, you're talking to a kindred spirit and uh, you know, my right. story. I just, uh, I just, this is just so fun. Sorry, Crystal, we're kind of like. Hey, oh, no, all... I love it. I, Crystal, um... Oh, Crystal's still here? Oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank no, I, I'm, I'm listening. I'm, uh, I, I have to share just a couple things that um, I grew up in an automotive family as well. So oh. when I was in high school, I restored a 66 GTO with my dad. And, oh, and nice. so like, I'm, I'm totally like into this stuff. Like, this isn't boring to me at all. Like, I, uh -oh. I'm. I'm in it, so. I didn't uh, know that about you. Can, do you still do mechanical stuff or try to? No, not really. I mean, I'm very handy and I'm always working on projects, but I haven't done a car project in, in years. Well, just yeah. hearing you say that, I haven't done a car project in years. That just sounds amazing. <laughs> <laughs> so my, I'm, uh, my father was the owner of the QT Bar in Superior. Uh, and... Uh, uh, of course, uh, one day, seven years old or eight years old, he brought home a deck of cards. This deck. And I, and, uh, I just started staring. Well, look at that. Look at that water makes some movement, right? I just, I, for hours, I would stare, Stephen, into this blue water and this red canoe. And I just, as a kid, seven, eight years old, it's 1974, 73, uh, and could not figure out what was going on here with this thing it just it just compelled me uh and then of course then I started becoming more aware of other items and uh and uh, in junior high I remember the junior high instructor telling me Peter you can't only make Ham's bear stuff I'm like okay well that was the end of my art career show the flip side of that card Peter show the oh you bet well yeah, yeah yeah I mean I mean how can you not like that well that's, and everyone and that's, is different all the face cards have a, the bear doing a different sport I love it yeah. Oh, I got that is right. really cool. He's bowling in that one. Yeah. 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 Every face yeah. card has got a different sport on it. So how can you not like that? I love, and I love that bowling is the sport. I mean, <laughs> well, I, just happen to, I just happen to have that. Yeah. I just happen to have that one, but I've got a, I, I did it actually with the first project that I made was from the deck because I collected these decks. I have about two or three of these decks because of the connection it had to me when I was a kid, but you're right. That picture 
that picture is bad enough for a seven year old, right? Just like, wow, what's going on here? But then you had all these, you know, you got all these hands. Uh, you got the, and, and this one here was really, t uh, as a baseball fan myself, uh, the Joker from the deck. Mm -hmm. Th this picture here really compelled me. But anyway, so then as a, so I can remember, Stephen, uh, well, when I was 13 for Christmas, I received a full fledged scenorama in 1975. I woke up in our mantle in our house. My dad had had his friends come and deliver the scenorama that was in the bar and it came to our house and stayed there for a couple of years. 1975, Stephen. Wow. The, wow. And then, oh, I know, I'm, I'm ancient. Then in 70s, I could, right about that time, I put an ad in the, in the newspaper. I, I want to buy ham stuff. This is Stephen. And uh, I started getting uh, calls. And one lady said, yeah, I've got this sign with some clouds in the sky. And I was like, yeah. And my parents said, Peter, we don't want you going over around town to people's homes. And they kind of 86 that plan. But back in 75, I went 76, I wanted to start buying stuff, but I didn't. And you did, you know, and I and I did it, unfortunately. But it doesn't matter. It's all like you said, it's all good. There's no regrets. Uh, but this this blue water and uh, and these these pictures and the artists who made these things, and, and there's just something that still has a huge appeal to me. And uh, uh, one of the segues, Crystal do, uh, does a lot with, you know, the spiritual side. She's kind of a mystical person. And uh, and I, I guess I, I've been thinking that this blue water and this image was really the start of my own, like, mystical element that I have. I really credit it to that as a child, just staring into that blue and just letting my eyes just kind of wander. So my connection with this brand is really deep. And then to be here with you and crystal at the same time talking about it it's just a, it's a dream come true so that's that's that it's cool as well yeah I it's love almost it. like peter you were like doing your first meditating right you know that's like it, it's like it brought you into this little trance and you're you're like looking into the water and and then you're you know going inside and and reflecting and and then and that's all tied to the beer which is something physical which is you know and also i'm it it is alcohol, so it has spirits in it. And, you know, oh, spirits cool. are, it, it's called spirits for a reason, you know, like, <laughs> and, and so, um, so maybe it is like kind of a, this spiritual thing that you have with Ham's beer. It's not, yeah. it's not too far fetched to think that that is the case, you know? Well, thank you. And, th and then uh, just to, just to kind of end the origin. And again, this came to me again this week in this preparation is, uh, we, I remember the teacher uh, talking about the Song of Hiawatha. And I don't know, Stephen, if you know that Longfellow poem. It's kind of a classic Native, it's about the uh, uh, Native American god Hiawatha and his girlfriend Minnehaha. Well, and, and in our textbook, and I'm not an expert on the poem, but I just remember in the, in the textbook, there was this beautiful picture that kind of reminded me of the, of the Hams picture in, about this poem by Longfellow. And I see about a week later, we drove down to St. Paul and I uh, asked Dad, Dad, where's the, where's the Ham's Brewery? And he said, oh, it's on, uh, it's on Minnehaha Avenue. I'm like, no, that can't be true. It's on Minnehaha. So that, that sealed it for me that there was some, you know, ancient, I don't know if there's an ancient energy, but something that someone thought of in the brewery, Stephen, and said, you know, this is our path. We're going to be doing this water thing and, and, and. Then they, I think they just took it to a very, if I may say, in my my spin, a very spiritual level. Yeah, absolutely, yeah, that's for sure. I say it is, and and the thing is, is with with hams, uh, I you know I have the reflection magazines that was a bi monthly magazine that the, the all the employees got, and and in that magazine, of course, they always have the listings of the employees. And there's 25, 30, 35 years that they've worked. And you don't keep employees at a, at a brewery or any business for that matter, that long without treating them really well. Mm -hmm. In fact, we had it one year, uh, we had, we always had a, a show at the old brewery after it closed in the parking lot, a, a trade show. And one year we agreed to, uh, we got a hold of uh, former employees, distributors, uh, different people that were associated with hams and we invited them to a picnic after the show and so we had about oh 
20, I suppose, different guys show up. And, and without, without doubt, every one of those guys said, what a great company that uh, was to work for. I'm glad you did that. And how, how, you know, because they were, they were loved in St. Paul. I mean, that was, I mean, it was part of the, I mean, the East St. Paul, I mean, that was it, whatever. Uh, the one, the one story that uh, really stuck with me, I, the, the one fellow, and we had every guy get up and kind of tell his story, so to speak. And the one guy got up and he says, Hey, he says, I was just, just a regular guy in the bottling plant. And he said, my mother-in-law passed away and it was a dead of winter. And she was out in Montana, it was out in Montana somewhere. So he says, I asked my boss, I says, Hey, I need to go to this funeral. And he's take, you know, however long you need to go. And he says, we drove out there in the middle of a blizzard, we got to this little town, I don't remember the name of the town, but this little town, found a funeral home, walked in the funeral home, and the biggest and the nicest bouquet there uh, was from your friends at Hams. Nice. Uh, I, I mean, if that doesn't give you chicken skin, nothing That's does. I mean, so I, mean, sweet. That, I mean, and he says, I was just, I was just a worker in the bottling plant. I was not, you know, top gun or nothing, but, but yeah, that, that told me right there what a great company that was, and they really cared for their employees. Thing centered around that sky blue waters. I mean, uh, uh, now that, like I say, the new can that Peter mentioned, I mean, they went back to what they call the retro style can with the crown logo, pine tree logo. Oh, it's, I got a couple uh, 30 packs here the other day, and it's just magnificent. It's oh, really? Dark blue. I mean, it's just unbelievable. You see so many, like the, the, the Facebook page, and you see so many people, you know, posting, you know, the can, which, you know, the 70s can, which even when I first started, I mean, again, this is this is the image that this is the image that I thought of of hams and this crown, right? And that's the one. Yeah. So when I got when I got older and I started thinking, why, why, you know, I've never been too big of a fan of the contemporary can. I mean, it's always been just like, why they even switch? Mm -hmm. First of all, yeah. do you have an idea why they switched? I say, you know, you get the bean counters. I say, okay, let's let's change this up, and and that's another another facet of the deal. Is is a different test cans that they had right. that you know let's let's try this color or this design right and and a lot of those are obviously one of a kind type things and right. and, and uh, I really enjoy those too I got, yeah. I got a good selection of those but I saw that I, red one that you had yeah that was uh, yeah 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 and, and so I'm as I say I'm still kind of a can guy at heart because that's how I sure. start so and that's the only cans I have now are just hams and ones that are brewed by hams so right, right. Uh, that. Uh, yeah, they say the test cans are really kind of hold a special spot. Sure, you, sure. Think of those guys in that in that meeting room. Okay, okay, here's here's four different labels. Do you think any of these grab your eye? You know, do you think this one? Right. Right. Because it was all about selling. I mean, it, yeah. and I think now they're going to find that the that this new label with the retro thing and the nostalgia uh, thing, the one, and they're going it's going to go nuts. Yeah. Well, that's 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 why we're here. I mean, I think I, that's another reason. I think this you're, you're right. It's going to go nuts. And I was uh, this morning, I thought. They may even run the old commercials. Oh, that'd be awesome. That'd be cool. Right? Well, you know, and, and, yeah, like I say, for the longest time, they, they back in, uh, back in, oh, she was probably early 2000, uh, I knew the lady that, at the gift shop quite well. She'd always call me when something new came in. And, and she called me up and she said, uh, hey, just give you a heads up. She says, they're pulling the bear. All bear advertising is, is gone off the shelf as of today. I said, why? And they said, well, they, 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 the, the Joe Camel deal, they don't want to be yeah, sure, sure. the kids. And so they right. took the bear away and I, oh man, that's a, that's my favorite part. Yeah and, yeah. and so, and it was gone for a long time, but now they're bringing, they're even bringing him back. So, wow. I mean, they well, got and a actually, tap knob and, and yeah, I say, when, yeah. When I started in uh, staring into that wall and looking at the, you know, looking at the cards, the bear had stopped as well for from the 70 till about 79. Mm -hmm. I keep writing letters to hams as a kid saying, why, you know, why don't you bring back the bear? I don't understand this. You know, I just couldn't understand as a kid. And, uh, but I even went so far to, you know, Blacklock, Les Blacklock, who is the photographer, again, of right? This is a Les Blacklock with a Leica lens. I mean, I became kind of, not obsessed, but tried to follow his work and, you know, where he took these pictures and, and how, he, how he captured the aura of whatever it is, you know, the, the Minnehaha Hiawatha spirit, uh, the Northern Minnesota spirit, the, uh, 
you know, and then the fact that you mentioned, you know, the, the quality of the company that it was, uh, you know, I just, you know, trying to get where, who was the elevated being at Ham's or was it the Ham's family? Was it Theodore? And, well, uh, and a lot of it was, was their advertising ag- agency, Campbell, Campbell Lathoon, where we're absolutely genius. I mean, they were absolute geniuses, and 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 they, I say, they came up with the motion signs and the and the and 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 that kind of stuff, and and they were, and then then obviously Bill Stein, who was the one of the original artists for Hams. What what a wonderful man he was! I mean, he he embraced our club, our Hams Club. In fact, he designed our commemoratives every year, and he was just just a just this nicest guy. He passed away here just last year, but uh, he and fully embraced our club and and. Uh, and he just he just loved the atten- I think he liked the attention that he was getting. Oh sure. But, but but he was he was so generous to our club. You know he designed the commemoratives every year and and uh, he was just he was just a great great guy, and and he t- would tell stories about how they they would you know go down into uh, bars in in St Paul to convert them over to hams whatever ten o'clock in the morning they'd sit and have a beer you know hey this is the way this should be I mean what a great time that had to be to work yeah. for a company like that I mean. You get to drink beer while you're working. I mean, I, yeah, yeah. what's wrong with this picture, right? But yeah, yeah. I was bartending at 13, so in, <laughs> in 1976, so you nice. can imagine things are a little bit different, you know, than when it came to alcohol. And oh gosh, I guess so. Well, they, 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 they. Uh, you could drink in the lunchroom during lunch. They, oh, they, yeah. had, they had a tapper right there in the lunchroom. I remember walking by the lunchroom on the tours, and the employees are in there having a cocktail or having, so having a beer. Yeah. <laughs> We all brought stuff uh, to sh- kind of show and tell, whatever our sure, week, sure. photo albums or items, or whatever. And they were just amazed you know, that you guys, you guys are collecting that stuff. You know, that, that's just, just and, and one of my favorite sayings is the stuff that's worth the most money is the stuff that was meant to be thrown away. Right, you know, like, right. One of my Cardboard favorite things. things. Yeah, well, yeah, exactly. One of my favorite things I collect are the little trifold sports schedules, you know, because Hams was huge into sports. Right. And they're not only sponsored the Minnesota teams, but the right. Chicago teams and Houston teams. And and after the year, why would you keep those? Right. Yeah. Right. They're, they're, they're going to get to all, and, and, and during the year, they're in <laughs> like some. Why would you keep those? <laughs> yeah. Well, right. And, and, you know, the, the season's over. And, and a lot of times they were in right. somebody's billfold all marked up and, and folded up and they, they, they didn't survive. I mean, the, the right. Cineramas, like Peter was talking about, those, you know, and they, they caught hell too because of, because of the, the environment that they were in. But they actually were made to at least keep, whereas those schedules right. or any of that cardboard advertising stuff. Yeah. After yeah. the promotion, pff, that went in, a, right. went in a dumpster. Yeah. Right. Right. You know, there was uh, there was a phenomenon that I remember. There was there would be a three three shaped uh, there'd be three shaped images and then and a triangular cube and then there were a lot of signs were made back then in the seventies that had that would, that it would change and roll and change. I think Hams has one and that was electronic actually that where it where it switches, but they were mechanical well, mechanical, I don't know if that's the word for it, but cardboard signs made with that kind of concept of the turn. But mm-hmm. really excited me, of course, when I got the Cinerama and then took it apart is to see how it worked, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, and Crystal, you know, if you I don't know if you've had a chance, Crystal, to see these signs in their beauty. I, I looked at, at your website, Stephen, and like, oh, okay. I think I got a, I went down a rabbit hole of, of ham <laughs> signage and all sorts of things. So I have all these images in my head, but yeah, yeah. I definitely did. When the, when actually, the water moves, right? You yeah, know, so, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. really cool. Yeah, they, <laughs> they actually, the, 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 the fellow that I talked to, the, the, the son of the guy that invented the sign uh, from Lakeside Plastics and, and how he got the idea was he was going home from work and the sun was setting down in behind a picket fence and he seen that that motion and that's how he came up with that. It, it's a simple right. concept, but right. what a great effect. That's yeah. a great, cool. that is really cool. Cause yeah, with the campfire and everything, I mean, yep. genius, genius. Yeah. Well, speaking of the, well, there you go, Crystal. There's your, there's your front for this episode is that campfire. Right? Well, I'm yeah, and, and I love that. Um, I love hearing how ideas are sparked. Because yeah, yeah. to me, that's like the root of, you know, like, like, how did, how did anything come to be? It, it starts with an idea. So, so to hear that, you know, like, and I can see, I can visualize that in my mind. I can see the sunlight going through Wait, a picket yeah, fence yeah. and and then I see the sign and I, so it, I just, I love the concept and, and just like hearing how those things start. Cause it's, 
it's really intriguing. Yeah. Well, every once in a while, you, you, you know, if you see two fences that are together, even metal fences, and if you're driving your car, and if you look and you can see right. that kind of Th that effect. effect. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. yeah, And that's all it is. It's just two, it's, it's a stationary line with another set of lines going yeah. over the top of it. And this it's, is like going. <laughs> that's all it is. It looks so good. Well, Stephen, so, so the Rippler, I mean, the first motion sign. Is, was that the Rippler? I'm not, well, are, are you I'm, talking water? The water motion signs, you mean? Well, good question. I'll, I'll back it up. What, what was Ham's first motion sign? The, the first one, oh. it, it was a, it was made out of cardboard, actually. It's, it stands about like so tall and it's got a, uh, a moon uh, on, a, on a clear uh, cellophane and it, and it just rotates. And then there's a bottle with it pouring into a glass and it looks like the beer is pouring into the glass and the bubbles come. And then, and then the the moon. It says "Age from Moon to Moon" on it. Right. And that that's kind of what I consider the first motion sign at Ham's Head. And that would have been late forties. Um, so was that plastic? Was that cardboard with like a wire? Is that what? It, or was it actual? It was light. It had an incandescent. It had an incandescent bulb in it with a little motor. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it was, so it was, was obviously the, super tough. But I the, the first you know what i would call the, the, the one that everybody you know there's a 1956 tv rippler they call it right and, it, and, and the reason they call it that is because it looks like a tv and then there's obviously the scenorama that peter mentioned and there's there's a couple different sizes of that there's two different sizes of that and then there's the 65 anniversary rippler which was made to celebrate 100 years of brewing 1865 to 1965 and then the starry nights which was voted the best beer sign in America in 1958, by the way. You can see why once you see, I mean, it, it's a fantastic sign. And then they had a little small one that actually went on top of the cash rate called the dust to dawn or sunrise sunset. Yeah. And, and it did exactly that. It, it changed from dust to dawn. And that would originally sat on top of a cash register. It had a, like a little light that shine down on the keys. That's a, that's another one that's, that's really popular. Uh, yeah. But those are, those are kind of your, your, your big boys as far as the motion right. signs. Crystal, just, I mean, uh, you certainly, I mean, the, the moon element, the moon element and the dust to dawn and age that many moons, it's just such a, and Crystal is a, very much a full moon person and she does a lot of full moon meditations, et cetera. And uh, again, it just seems to connect to some kind of a, uh, I don't know, a mystical element, even in the, in the signs and in, in the slogan, the language and the, and the aura of, I mean, you look at the uh, Starry Nights or or the dust to dawn, and you look into that, and there are some moments, not maybe not all of the cycle, but some moments where it's just absolutely beautiful. Just just really captures something that. Kind of I also explain. noticed that um, I feel like there is a bit of an indigenous element, like the that <laughs> one. Right um, out of my mouth, yeah. Yeah, because <laughs> it's it seems like they're um, like the drumming. The artist was a Native American, so that they hired one of the bear drawers. And I always, I just assumed that going back again to my one obsession is that I think I'm obsessed. But I, I tried to figure out what, where did this design come from? And then I saw this, 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 this oh gosh, Stephen, maybe you gotta help me here. But uh, I, I thought maybe this was like from Ojibwa, from uh, powwow they, dances. Yeah, they, 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 I say they had a, uh, an Indian drum and bugle chord that, that played in, in, in uh, parades trying to express I think what we're trying to express here is that is this kind of a uh, you know uh, again what the, uh, um, the mystical element of the Midwest and and of uh, maybe the Native American shamanism you know Krista you little mentioned bit, the drums bit. one yeah. thing I find fascinating is that the the ownership of the brewery changed over the years but it seems like the following of the beer didn't really change so <laughs> So, so that that makes me think that they they were kind of pulling the same essence through, like well, with each ownership, or or how did it change? Not, yeah, not only that, but what you know, back in those days, uh, the the local breweries, uh, the the people were very very loyal to their local breweries. I mean, St. Paul, obviously, you had you had Hams and you had Schmidt; those were their brands. And then you go over to Minneapolis, and it was Grain Belt and Glicks. In fact, when mm -hmm. Hams bought the Gunther Brewery in Baltimore in 1954, they mistakenly stopped brewing Gunther beer. Well, right. Baltimore, you know, the, the people in, in Baltimore was very loyal to the Gunther brand. Well, Hams went in 
stop brewing Gunther and just started brewing hams. Well, and then, and then another thing that happened is they couldn't get enough demand. So they shipped in several rail, railroad cars full of hams from St. Paul. Well, it froze en route. Oh no. And they, did, they didn't know it and, and it happened. And of course it ruined the taste of beer. So that started that down. That, so that brewery failed rather quickly because of right. that. And, right. and they learned from their mistake then when they bought the Burgi Brewery in San Francisco, because then they continue not only hands, they continue to brew right. Burgi. Right. And, and uh, so, yeah, I say they, they, they did make some mistakes. I mean, and, and, and uh, but the, they were very aggressive in those early 60s and, and 70s years, I mean, with their marketing and, uh, and, uh, but yeah, I say hams, and that's I think why it's so popular now that it's the 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 kids, you know. Well, hey, my dad drank that, my grandpa drank. I remember that as a kid, and and you know the nostalgia thing has never been bigger than it is right now, in my opinion. Uh, and of course, I never threw my stuff away. I definitely prized it, but except for the deck of cards, maybe I didn't carry anything with me to Japan. And now I've got a little bit of collection here. It's kind of difficult, but where, where what's going on? It's just it's just it's just remarkable, and I think. Personally, I mean, again, from my view, I think it's, it's, you know, it's got this, this mystique element of it. And I think you probably agree with that, but I mean, the state of the, the state of the collecting market and the state of the sales of the brand, I mean, what is, what's, it just seems like it's, it's, it's on fire, just exploding. Well, I, I always say that people tend to collect things they grew up with. Sure. There's so many baby boomers are, they're, they're getting towards the end now, but they remember their dads and their grandpas drinking it, and they right. remember those commercials as kids. Right. And I think that's kind of that's kind of helped translate a little bit. Plus, you know, the beer is 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 good beer. It's it's pretty inexpensive, right. and and, and uh, you know, you college kids, hey, sure. you, you, we drank the cheapest beer we could find. Yeah, right. You know, we had three favorite kinds: bottle, keg, or can. I mean, we didn't care. I mean, <laughs> You know, I don't, we don't want to tell people the cheap beers that we were drinking Steve, oh, back God. in the seventies. Yeah. Uh, Crystal, I, I, my, my 16th or 17th birthday, I got a, a case of beer from my dad's liquor store and it was and a goal. I'm sorry to any Fox Deluxe fans that might be listening, but we were drinking this beer and all of us were wondering what is on the roof of our mouths. Fox Deluxe. So anyway, yeah. but yeah. But I think that certainly Hams and, and Adolf Coors is producing a, uh, you know, a, a fine beer. And I'm just kind of sad about the light. The light was absolutely delicious, but uh, I guess they just can't. Is the light is done now, right? Is that yeah? Right? yeah. There's rumors, but I don't know. I I I when when I say when I, I know the the fellas out there are pretty good and and uh, and I, I you know when this whole kind of phenomenon thing started, he says, you know, I'll be honest with you, he says we bought the brand to kill it off, and and and. Uh, so then wow. I got this nostalgia thing hit about that same time. And, and, you know, they, they reinvented that, you know, Schlitz has come out now with their original yeah. recipe and the, and the paps thing is kind of caught on sure. again. It's, it's the nostalgia retro thing is, is really big right now. And, and hams yeah. has just jumped in with both feet. Yeah. Right. Finally, right. Because it. It, it's yeah. almost, uh, I don't, I hate to say trendy, but I mean, it's, yeah. It, yeah it's it's kind of trendy. I think Yeah, it, Peter, I'm wondering in Japan, like I know that um, Japanese people look at American culture and uh, and sometimes certain things are really um, big. Do, do does anyone in in Japan know what hams is, or is this is this there yet, or are you bringing it there? Is yeah. what I want to know. <laughs> I, I, if anyone's bringing it here, it's it's me. I I try to. Uh, although a friend of mine told me a couple of years ago that he does have a mini scenorama, which is about this big. It's just a shortened version of the big of the big one. Uh, so there is a scenor mini one scenorama in Japan. I know that. If you took an American beer and you tried to put it in Japan, I think the best match is hams. In my opinion, uh, I, agree. Oh, I agree. Yeah, I think your uh, like your passion for this has um, kind of kept hams alive through the years. Do you think? Like, like, well, do you think I, they would have maybe haven't. stopped I, making well, t-shirts or something if they thought Stephen wasn't going to buy them out? <laughs> you, boy, you almost could have at one time, Stephen. You almost. Jesus. I tell you, I, the one guy they said they, they had to put in a new canning line. I says, I'd like to think I had a, something to do with that. <laughs> Stephen, do you um, do you identify with yourself as an artist? I mean, because it's very artistic to be doing what you're doing to fix those things up. As far as restoring these signs, yeah, yeah, I take great pride in that. To take, yeah. take one and that doesn't work, 
that I just had one today that I finished up for a guy and, and it, you know, and sometimes I wonder, you know, I have a hard time saying no, I feel <laughs> sorry. for. It's almost like I feel sorry for him. There's almost like a, I'm adopting a kid, you know, <laughs> and, and, and I, and I make these parts to restore them and, and there's nothing better than to see the look on their face when they come to get their sign after, you know, it's been neglected and sat in a basement all these years and it's broken and it's dusty and dirty and, and it doesn't work. And then when they come get it and I plug it in and everything works again, oh, it's just, it, 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 it's, it's, it's really, uh, it's an indescribable feeling to see their face, to see that. And, and, uh, and, and I, I just always tell I say, okay, you've just been infected, infected with the hams virus. I mean, yeah. <laughs> I mean, the hands it's, it's the swarm. Yeah. This is what's and, happening. And, and, and then, of course, so then I bring them down to my house, and and I said, well, you know, I always say, well, you got time for a tour, and they think my shop that I have. That's they think that's my stuff. Right. Uh -huh. No, 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 no. This is just extra stuff here. And so I bring them down to the house, and they they come in the garage, and they're going, oh, holy cow! Yeah. And yeah. Then they get into the house, and then they come into the basement, and they go to the first room, and they're they're just. You know, and then I take them. I take them into the second room. I think that kind of puts them over the edge a little bit. But, but uh, <laughs> and then we so, get into the dungeon. Yeah, <laughs> and, and it's fun to see the reaction with that too. And I always tell them, I said, "Well, you think you brought your ham sign to the right guy?" Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I think. And uh, you know, people say, "Well, you you must have everything." I, no, I don't. No way. Not even close. <laughs> There's this nobody does. I mean, right. I, I just I, I and I tell people, I says, you know, whether you're just starting or you're advanced. I don't care whose collection you go see, you always see something you haven't seen before, or a way of displaying it, or or something like that. I mean, that, that's that's the fascination of this hobby I have. I that they made that, you know, and and, uh, and, and it now, still. yeah. Now, guys, got to be pretty vigilant because, and I don't want to call it fake items, but there's what what I call fantasy pieces. In other words, stuff that they that they've made that right. isn't legitimate ham pieces. Uh, yeah. And they're getting dang good at it. I mean, the, 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 yeah. these, uh, a lot of it's coming from India, but they, they'll make these porcelain signs and they got the little chips in there and they put them outside and they rust. I mean, wow, you got to really be careful, especially if yeah. you pay big dollars for it. Well, uh, I, that's only going to get, that's only going to get worse, I would assume, right? Well, yeah, well, it, it, because, because there is money involved here, obviously it yeah. isn't, it, and you know, and you'll get that in any hobby. I mean, it's, it's yeah. like in the car business. Well, they'll take a they'll take a seventy barracuda and make a seventy hemicuda out of it, you know. And the, they'll even get so far as they're not scrupulous enough to change the numbers, even. I mean, it, wow. and, and as long as they advertise it as a fantasy piece, I don't more part to it. More part to it. And I and I tell people that I have people send me pictures of stuff all the time. Is, is this real? No, it's not. But I says. If you like it and it isn't terribly priced, buy it. Who cares? Right, right, right. But the, right, the problem right. that I have with that, that stuff is now we know it's it's a fantasy piece, but down the line, say it changes hands a couple times, that area is going to get a little blurred. But by far, the, the beer collectible hobby and the people that are in it, phew, the best. I mean, they're, they're, yeah, we're in competition, but it's a friendly competition. Right, I mean, right. and if there is a bad egg in there, some have come up, it doesn't take long. To get them weeded out. Uh, the, the, this hobby polices themselves better than any other hobby I've ever participated yeah. in. Well, it's the sky blue waters. I mean, I mean if you're, uh, if yeah. you're, if you don't get that, then if you don't understand what, I don't know, the effect that and and the, the legacy and again the, the mystique of this, uh, you know, age for many moons and mm -hmm. if you, I mean, what are you doing here on this planet? I mean, what what's your right? I mean, you're missing. Oh, you're missing. Yeah. People ask me, well, why hams? And I said, well, if you're going to collect beer stuff in Minnesota, what better brand? I mean, yeah. land of sky blue waters, and how can you not like the bear? I can remember, Stephen, talking on the phone with my first girlfriend, and all of a sudden I heard the bear is back or that commercial. I think it was the par parachute. I think it yep. the first time it played. And he jumped I, out I of the plane, jumped out of the plane with his critters. <laughs> yeah, I said, oh my God, I'm sitting my girlfriend, said, oh my God, the bear is back. <laughs> crazy she was probably so like what are you talking oh, about Peter? <laughs> you like beer or not i mean you you're fascinated i mean the the the, the helicopter with the the parachutes i mean yeah oh, yeah yeah you, that's 60s that? right yeah yeah 60s. how do you beat that i mean you don't. i know i know so my brother matthew is just retired he uh he's kind of a handyman and he he actually repaired a dusk the dawn sign 
for me. And I was watching and I, I don't spend, you know, you know, he's your brother, but you know, we don't spend time. He's, you know, he's gone, he's developed his own way. And he was just staring at the sign. I'm like, Maddie, what are you doing? He's like, I'm, I'm just calming my mind and trying to figure out how this works. And I was watching, I was like, who are you? First of all, I didn't know you could do this stuff. And second, he, I'll be darned if he didn't fix it. The electric, the electric was bad and the roller was bad and, uh, and he got it going. I think I and sent I in like, the parts, I think, didn't I? Oh, you, you very well may have done I that. Think yeah, I, did. I, I think I did, I think I did. I remember that, yeah, yeah. To put it in, and then, and then the, and the bulb, of course, the difficult bulbs sometimes, which is a mm -hmm. different market in and of itself. Uh, and so I'll be getting, so uh, I don't know, buddy, two years ago, I had something go wrong with one of my signs here. And I was, I just thought, I'm going to try to do what my brother did and see if, if I just look at it and just try to see, oh, no, I'm sorry, it was a remote car. It was a remote car. I'm quit working. And I'll be dang, Stephen, if I didn't fix it. But I just like, I, you know, not thinking I can't do it, but just calming your mind and just like, seeing what's going on here and 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 so many of us i think uh when it comes to repairing think we can't and then for sure then you can't right i mean mm -hmm. you, you just once you th if you think you can't do it it's not going to happen right it's not going to happen no right but if you give yourself a chance to just like just try to understand what's going going on uh then sometimes it can it can you can do it and uh, i think that's a pretty good lesson for all of us to learn <laughs> actually is just figure out what's happening first and yeah. then maybe you can i have this theory that um anything can be fixed if you have the right tool and a tool isn't always like something that you use that like in your hand it's not always like your pen or whatever but a lot of times the tool is like the idea you know and that kind of comes back yeah. to like yeah so so just thinking that you can fix it you already can just have mm -hmm. to figure out you know, the ways. Positive, positive attitude. It means a lot. Totally. Mm -hmm. And like, and, and also like when you are doing something and you don't have the right tool and then you finally figure out like what the right tool is, it's like, oh my gosh, this is so much easier. <laughs> <laughs> but it kind of opens up a whole new, whole new brainwave, a whole new way yeah. to think for the yeah. next time. Right. Yeah. 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 It's like you have a whole new synapse for there's, there's nothing like that feeling. One day, this has been several years ago, my phone rings, right? And it's this big, long number, not a normal United States number. Right. And maybe it's Peter calling me from Japan for all I know. But anyway, yeah, sure, sure. So, so I answer it, and here's this guy from Australia. And, and he was quite hard to understand because he had a really, you know, English-style accent, whatever. And right. I suppose I thought I had a bad accent, too. But anyway, he... The, he had he had a friend in in Salt Lake City that he knew that had a Cinerama, and he had seen that and had fallen in love with it and wanted one in the worst way. And he says, "I did a little research. I found you. I understand you have them." And I says, "Yeah, I do." And uh, I says, "In fact, I have one ready to go right now." And, and we agreed on a price. And he says, um, "I what I need is to have you you know send that. To, my daughter lives in Los Angeles, and she's going to have a baby right around Christmas time." He says, "I'm flying over." to Los Angeles to, when she has this child. Right. And he says, I can pick it up then. And I says, well, I said, I, I've got a problem. I, I won't ship it. Right. And he, what? I says, no, I said, I, I can't, I can't, I can't ship it. I says, it'll no get destroyed. I'll guarantee it. And guarantee it, yeah. he says, well, I really want to get one from you. And I said, I, I get that. But I says, he said, well, let me see what I can do. So about two weeks later, he calls me up and he says, how far are you from Spencer, Iowa? And I says, <laughs> about an hour and a half. And he says, all right, he says, I have a friend in Spencer, Iowa, and that is a scrap dealer. And this guy in Salt Lake City was a big scrap dealer. And he says, he comes to this place in Spencer quite often. Could you get the sign down to him? My buddy will pick it up from him, bring it back to Salt Lake City. Then when I come into Los Angeles, I'll go to Salt Lake City and pick well, the sign okay. up. I said, yeah, I'll do that for you. And I says, I said, I'm, at, I'm still a little concerned about you getting that sign on the plane back to Australia. Right. He says, no worries, mate. It's my plane. Uh oh. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah, I do have a Cinerama in Brisbane, Australia. And he had Sad. to change the electrical a little bit because the cycles are different. Uh -uh. But, Is he uh, happy he said, with it? Oh, yeah, yeah. He, he said, in fact, I did an article for our newsletter about it. He's got it hanging above his mantle in, in Australia. He says, you ever come to Australia? You got, place, you got a place to stay. But uh, no worries, well, mate. Fantastic. It's my plane. <laughs> Pam's has touched 
so many lives, not yeah. just not just with their beer, with their advertising, with their with with their employment. I mean, it just there's just so many segments. About two weeks ago, I had this strange dream, Crystal, where I was pulling a string out of a wall, and it just kept coming and coming and coming. I'm like, what the heck kind of dream is that? I went online. And a lot of people have it where they're pulling the string out of their mouth, mm -hmm. and and what it means, or what you know, what people think it means, is that everything's coming together. Thank you, universe, for putting us all together. Yeah, thank you, universe. Yeah. Yesterday I was cleaning up my table and it says all, can you see it? Yep. yep. Can you imagine all dreams coming true? Perfect. I think it's perfect.